Well, hello everyone, my name is Wiggo and welcome back to another video. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video on Pokemon Moon, Emerald and beating the game with only shiny Pokemon. And in that video, I asked you guys for 10,000 likes. And if you managed to hit that like goal, I would do another shiny only video and... It's easy to say that you guys absolutely smashed it. So today, we are going to be beating Pokemon Black with only shiny Pokemon. The full shiny odds of this game are 1 in 8192, which means that we're going to have to encounter quite a lot of Pokemon before we see that shiny sparkle. Let me know in the comments down below what your first shiny Pokemon ever was. I would love to see all of your stories about it. And before we get into the gameplay, let's explain what I'm actually going to do in this video. I will be able to capture one Pokemon before or after a gym badge. Combine that with the starter Pokemon that I'll be getting and we will have 9 total shiny Pokemons throughout this run. And to put a little bit of risk into the video, I will also be doing a hardcore Nuzlocke with them. Which means that I have a level cap after every single gym battle, I cannot use any items in battle, the battle mode must be on set, and I of course will only be able to use these 9 shiny Pokemon. Before we get into the video, let's try to up the like goal from the last shiny video. Let's try to shoot for 15,000 likes and I will bring you another one in the future somewhere. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into Pokemon Black with only shiny Pokemon. Well, in Pokemon Black and White, we start off with our shiny hunt for our starter. And I wanted to go with the coolest one of the three, Tepig. Not Tepic itself, but its final evolution, Embor, looks amazing as a shiny Pokemon with the blue flames. And to be honest, Superior and Samurott are nothing compared to it. Even though Tepic is probably my least favorite of the three, its shiny form just makes it shoot up that much higher. Tepic might not be the best option for this region because he's only good against three gyms. But then again, I don't think the other two would do much better. The thing with this game is though that you have to wait until you throw out your Tepic in battle to see if it's shiny. You can't actually see it when you get it from the package. Which is different in Pokemon Hard Gold and Soul Silver, where you can just immediately see that your starter is shiny. So here you have to go through a long sequence of picking your starter, then talking with Sharon and Bianca and starting a battle with them. So you may have already expected that I was here for hours upon hours of trying to get this Tepig. So just like everything in life, if you just try hard enough, you're eventually going to get it. And we managed to get our shiny Tepig after only 4 hours and 32 minutes of resets. As a normal human being that doesn't want to go insane because I've seen a billion Tepigs, I did use speed up for this. Which is pretty normal because I have to bring out videos on a pretty regular basis. Anyway, after being super happy with my little piggy, I beat up Sharon and Bianca and went to the lab to name my little piggy Bacon. We also got our Pokedex from the professor, said goodbye to our mother and finally headed on out in the world of Pokemon. With many unforeseen challenges in front of us, we first encounter Getsis in the next town. After listening to his usual meeting, we also meet up with our rival N here. But since he only has a Purloin at level 7 at this point, we can easily kill that thing with a couple of embers. After this, we continued our journey and found our mother again. She gave us running shoes. You know, those new Nikes. So now we can finally run. Which will make encountering Pokemon a lot faster too. We then met up with another rival of us, Bianca, but she has a starter weak to us, Snivy. She also has a Lillipop, but my Tepic easily took care of both of them with a couple of Embers, just like the last battle. Now before we go ahead and do anything else, we have to get a new encounter because with only a Tepic, there is no way I can take on the first gym leader which has water type Pokemon. And the only thing that I could think of in this part of the game that is good against water types is the Pansage that you get from this girl. I was also pretty happy because Pansage and Simisage are by far my favorite of the monkey trio. I mean, it's literally the only one with a good design in my opinion. And while Pansage's shiny is pretty underwhelming to me, I really love Simisage's shiny. But this does mean that we are going to have to get this Pokemon from this girl and just keep on resetting if it's not shiny, which is basically the same as with Tepig, there is just a little bit of a quicker process because we don't have to wait to go into a battle. 
we can just check our party and check if it's shiny. And in order to save time, I also did not nickname this Pan Sage because every time I would get it, I would have to nickname it, which means I would have to nickname it over a thousand times. And that's not really very convenient. So let me know in the comments down below what you would have named this Pan Sage because sadly enough, it didn't get a nickname. We finally got our second shiny in Pan Sage. So I was pretty happy with that. And with this little monkey, I could finally move on over to Sharon. My little broccoli monkey monkey easily overpowered Oshawott with Vine Whips and the second Pokemon Purloin was no different. After beating Sharon there was a gym battle that needed to be attended to. And this battle was with no one other than gym leader Caress. He has a Lillipop and a Pampur at this point in the game. And so Bacon the shiny Tepig was able to shine once again taking down Lillipop with a lot of embers. When his Pampur came out I had to switch on over to my Pansage who was then able to give it some smackaroos with the Vine Whip and eventually come out on top as well, getting ourselves our first gym badge of this game. Which means that we have to go to the Dream Yard in order to stop Gitsis from abusing this Muna. We then go back on our journey and see that Sharon has also gotten his first gym badge, which means that he wants a rematch against us. He does in fact still have the same team as before, which means that my little broccoli monkey once again takes out Oshawott and Purloin with the Vine Whips. Team Plasma is then once again up to no good stealing this little kid's Pokemon which means that me and Sharon have to go and save the day again. After that we give back the Pokemon to the little girl, we take on some trainers and our Tepic evolves into a Pig Knight. In my opinion this shiny isn't that amazing, it gets like a 5 out of 10 for me, nothing special. But then it's finally time for another shiny before we take on the next gym. This is a random shiny, I really, really wanted a Sock because that would be amazing against the next gym. And Sock with Sturdy in general would just be an amazing Pokemon to have throughout the entire game. So I went into the grass and I kept on running around, running around and running around and eventually re-ran into a Timpole. I absolutely love Timpole's shiny forms from Timpole to Palpitoad all the way up to Seismitoad, I think they look great. But the level up moveset for Palpitoad and Seismitoad really isn't that great. It's a water and a ground type, so I really can't complain. It's amazing, it's my favorite type combination, and it only has one weakness. So let's hope that this little boy doesn't die. I decided to name him Gus because if I look at a Seismitoad, it just looks like a Gus to me. We then need to go into the museum, and before we take on the gym, we have to take on N. His team is basically a joke though, only a Pitov, a Timpole, and a Timber. Gus takes care of the Pitov, Pansage takes care of the Timpole, and the Timber once again gets killed by Gus. After this friendly encounter, we go and take on the next gym leader, Lenora. She has two Pokemon, a Herdier and a Watchhog. Both normal types, so this means that our fighting type, Pig Knight, should do some decent damage here. What I did was I went in with Pansage because the Herdier has Intimidate and I don't want my Pig Knight to be at minus one in attack. I then Leech Seeded the Herdier so that I could switch into my Pig Knight and regain some health every turn. As I switched in though and I did get hit with a takedown, my Orenberry activated and I also got some health back by the Leech Seed. Then I started to use Work Up. And after two Work Ups I had to use a Flame Charge because I had to outspeed the next Pokemon. But then the Herdier went for takedown which if it would have hit, my Pig Knight would have gone down and this challenge would have probably ended right there and then. But the Herdier missed its takedown which means that I could take it down then go into Watchhog. I then went for the Arm Thrust. I just needed three Arm Thrusts to take down this Watchhog. And I got two and it put me to sleep with Hypnosis. It then went for Retaliate which left me with six HP. But then the turn after that I woke up and I hit my Flame Charge taking down Watchhog because there was no way that I could have switched anybody in without them fainting. So we managed to get our second Gym Badge with a bunch of luck. You know what happens after you beat the second gym badge though, you get yourself into a situation where Team Plasma steals the dragon skull so you have to retrieve it after doing this. 
You meet up with Burge, the third gym leader, and he says that you have to come and face him in the next city. Before we do that though, I go ahead and pick up a leaf stone down at the harbor, which is going to let me evolve my Pansage into a Simisage after it learns Seed Bomb, because I want Seed Bomb on Simisage. Team Plasma then once again steals someone's Muna, so we have to go and save it. What is it with these people and stealing useless Pokemon? After getting it back, we finally get the opportunity to challenge the next gym leader, Burge. But since we do have a fire type on our team, this should once again not really be a problem, right? That's what we thought of Lenora too, but let's see how Burge does against our Pig Knight. The battle actually starts off amazing because my Pig Knight hits a flame charge critical hit on the Whirlipede taking it down in one shot. Then going over to Dwebble I went for rollout since that's super effective on it and on the next Pokemon as well so with three rollouts that thing goes down. The last Pokemon is Lee Vanny. Since this is my fourth rollout it is of course going down in one hit and we also outspeed because of our flame charge speed boost. With this we get our third Jim badge. Now we have a couple of rival battles coming up, starting off with Bianca as the first one and she has a Herdier as her first Pokemon. This once again gives me the opportunity to start off with Pig Knight and go for two sets of Arm Trust to take it down. For Muna, I went into Pansage and destroyed that thing with a bite, then Servine came out, so I switched back into Bacon and destroyed that thing with some flame charges, then Pampor was her final Pokemon. So we swapped in Pansage again, Vine whipped it twice and won against Bianca. Now normally we would take on Sharon now, but I took this opportunity to take on another encounter. Since there were lots of great encounters in the desert, I could get Darumaka, I could get Sandile, I could get a Scraggy. So I really wanted one of these boys shiny. I would have preferred a Sandile over the other two because I already have a fire and a fighting type on the team. But to be honest here, all three of these Pokemon are great. While I was searching, I also evolved my Pansage into a Simisage and my Timpole also evolved into a Palpitoad. So now we got two nice more shiny boys on the team. And after running a couple more hours into the desert from left to right, from left to right, we eventually ran into this bad boy. Wait, is this shiny? I honestly didn't even notice at first. But apparently the shiny does change drastically once it evolves, so I'm looking forward to that. After capturing it though, I decided to name it Jeans. With our new team member, we now take on Sharon. He now has a pit of as his first Pokemon, which means that I cannot start off with Pansage or with Pig Knight. Or with Jeans. I just realized we have a major flying type weakness. Luckily we still have our Gus, who can destroy a pit of with a bubble beam. He then goes into his Duot. So I then swap into Simisage to destroy it with Seed Bomb. For Simiseer, I once again swap in Palpitoad and kill with Bubble Beam. The last Pokemon will be Lipard. And after swapping in Jeans, which resists its Dark type moves by 4, we easily take it down with Brick Break and send Sharon on his merry way. We then sit in the Ferris Wheel with N, have the most awkward conversation of a lifetime again. After this, we have to absolutely sweep his team with Scraggy, Brick Breaking, Sandile, Brick Breaking, Scraggy, Bane Attacking, Sigil and finally also feign attacking Darumaka to win another battle. Now I knew that with this team I really wasn't looking too great for the next gym leader since she has two Amolgas, which means that I had to go in search of something that could maybe counter them. There really weren't a lot of Pokemon that I knew that could help me out too much, but I really wanted to have a Trubbish because it gets Acid Spray and Stockpile, which means that it can lower the opponent's special defense and also and also buff both of its own defenses in one turn. But by searching on this route, I also had the opportunity to get Lipard or a Minchino, which are both pretty bad Pokemon at this point in the game. Of course, they can become better, but right now they wouldn't be so useful as a Trubbish. Luckily though, the Pokemon Gods finally blessed me with this little garbage bag with a pretty nice looking shiny once it evolves into Garbodor. After capturing it, we immediately go ahead and challenge Elisa. With Trubbish on the team, this doesn't really mean that we are going to have an easy fight though. We still have three Pokemon that are weak to her flying types. But at least we do have Palpitoad to cancel out Flame Charge from Zip Striker and all of the electric type moves. So I indeed started off with my trusty little garbage bag. 
I did use a couple of stockpiles, only two of them though, because then I realized that I could only use three of them, and the Amolgas would always do way too much damage for my Black Sludge to recover enough health. Acid spraying them or toxic spiking them also wouldn't really help because they're flying type which means toxic spikes don't work and acid spray also wouldn't really work because they would switch all the time. So eventually after getting one of the Amolgas down into a very nice health range I switched into Palpitoad. I then took out the Amolga with two more bubble beams, the next one then came out and I just knew that I had to swap here because otherwise my boy Palpitoad was going down. I swapped in Big Knight because I knew it was going to go for quick attack but they got a critical hit. Then it went for Aerial Ace leaving me with only a little bit of HP, I went for Rock Tomb, lowered its speed and brought it down into red health. I then went for another Rock Tomb while it used a potion and then finished it off with a flame charge which also upped my speed. I knew that I was still not out speeding this Zep Strika, so I swapped in Simisage and went for a Seed Bomb, but a Flame Charge did bring me down into red health, so I had to swap again, going into Jeans, who was able to take a Quick Attack and a Spark, and then finish off Zep Strika with a Brick Break, and all of our Pokemon are looking very bad, but we managed to win the Gym Battle without losing a single one of them. So we did manage to get our fourth Gym Badge at this point. We then moved on over to the Freezer of the next town, where Clay resides as Gym Leader, and in this freezer we once again have to take down some Team Plasma goons because they're shivering in the cold running away from the police. So after rallying them up, Clay thanks us and we get to take him on at his gym. And this was one of the easiest gym battles so far. I was able to one-shot Krokorok with Seed Bomb, then Leech Seed the extra drill, and with the Leech Seed damage combined with the Seed Bomb, we easily took that thing out too. And the last Pokemon, Palpitoad, also went down to Seed Bomb. Simus H really pulled his weight in this one, giving us our fifth gym badge already. Another gym badge most of the time means another shiny Pokemon, but we first have a couple more battles with our rivals before we get our next one. Starting off with the first one, Bianca. Her leading Pokemon is Herdeer, so we are going to be leading with our boy Simisage again. Seed bombing it twice and taking it down. Next up is Servine, so I swap in Pig Knight. Using only two flame charges and taking it down already. Panpour is up next, so we swap in Simisage again, take that thing down with Seed Bomb. And the last Pokemon is Musharna. Fun fact, this Musharna can absolutely not touch any Dark type, so I just swap in my Scraggy and go for a bunch of Fane attacks until it eventually goes down. After the battle, we do get the HM for Fly, but we're probably not going to use that because we don't have a flying shiny Pokemon right now. Before we get our next shiny Pokemon, I also took on N down at the end of Charge Stone Cave, but he was super easy to take down because he literally only has Pokemon from around that area, and they are all pretty weak. At least right now. Once they evolve, they're great. That's why I'm going to get my next encounter in Charge Tone Cave myself. There are three Pokemon here that would be super useful for the next gym, one of them being Joltik, the other one being Tynemo, and the other one being Kalink. If I could get just one of these three Pokemon shiny, the next gym, Skyla, would be an easy walk through the park. I also can get a Baldor, but that would not be great because I wouldn't be able to get a Gigalith since I won't be able to trade with anyone. And it would also be weak to her Swana, which is not really what I want. But once again, after a lot of hours, we eventually managed to get ourselves another shiny in Joltik. Probably the worst one of the three that I could have gotten in terms of the next gym because I really wanted a Tynemo or a Clink, but you know, I'll take a Joltik. Even though I'm not a big fan of spiders, a Galvantula is always nice to have. After I named it Araneo, I went to the big tower to make sure the bell was still working, made Skyla pretty happy and then went to take her on at her own gym, which is in an airport. Her leading Pokemon will be a Swoobat though, Psychic Flying, so I decided to lead off with Simisage and go for a Rock Tomb to lower its speed while it set up an Amnesia. That means that I am now faster and can go for another one to take it down already. And Pheasant thing came out and I was able to hit one more Rock Tomb, but then it hit me with two Leers and I knew that if I got hit now, I was dead, so I had to switch. So I swapped in Gus and then after missing one Muddy Water and getting hit with a Razor Wind and an Air Slash, I was then able to take down this Unpheasant with a couple more Muddy Waters after she used a Potion. The next Pokemon was Swana, so I swapped in Trubbish because I wanted to lower its special defense just a little bit more in order to take it down with Joltik eventually. 
So I went for an acid spray and then for a sludge bomb, but I got super lucky because my sludge bomb was actually a critical hit, so I didn't even have to bring in Joltik to take this thing down. After the battle, we get our six gym badge and also DTM for acrobatics, which we will be able to teach to Simisage. After then progressing through the routes, my Pig Knight evolved into an Embor. In my opinion, the best looking shiny on my team right now. And my Araneo also evolved into a Galvantula. Sadly enough, you can not really tell the difference that well between its regular form. Palpitoad then also evolved into Seismitoad and finally Trubbish evolved into a way cooler version of Garbodor with a light blue trash bag thing. Before we go through Twisted Mountain though, we have to take on Sharon again. He now has an Unpheasant as his first Pokemon, which my Aranei I can take out with an Electro Ball and an Electro Web, but we also got hit pretty hard by an Air Slash. He then went into Simi Sears, so I went into Gust to destroy it with Muddy Water. Duod got obliterated by Seed Bomb from Simi Sage, and finally Lipard got killed by my Brick Break from Jeans. We then also meet up with the champion after the battle, but there isn't really a lot that gets said here. We just get DHM for Surf, and that's really it. While then going through Twisted Mountain, my Scraggy finally evolved into Scrafty. And I told you earlier that it would go through a drastic change. It now has a very colorful shiny. I wouldn't say it's the most beautiful, but it's very colorful. We didn't actually get a Pokemon after our last gym badge, so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going into the grass just next to the 7th gym, and there is a chance that I could find a Drudigan here. And I don't know why a lot of people don't like Drudigan, but I think its design is absolutely amazing, and I love its shiny design also. There is also a chance of me getting a Mianfu and a Deerling, which I would be pretty disappointed with. But the Pokemon Gods, luckily enough, blessed me with a beautiful pineapple-looking Drudigan. That is exactly why I also called it Pineapple. Every time I see shiny Drudigan, it reminds me of some kind of pineapple for some reason. Now that we have our next shiny Pokemon, let's take on the 7 gym leader, Bryson. We're not taking Drudigan with us though, he's not going to do anything in this fight. Now for this gym, I basically just swept it with my boy Bacon, taking down Vanillite with a Heat Crash, then taking down Beartick with a Heat Crash and a Flame Charge, after getting hit with a Swagger and also hitting myself in Confusion. And the last Pokemon, the big Snowflake Cryogonal, also got destroyed by a single Heat Crash, giving us our easiest gym badge so far besides maybe the fifth one. So that seven gym badges in the pocket, which means that we can now do the events at Dragon Spiral Tower where N summons his Zekrom. Luckily, we are not going to be hunting the legendary in this game because it literally can be shiny, which means that we're just going to have to let him fly off with it. After this, I went back to the Dragon Spiral Tower because I really wanted to have a Golet because I think Golet and Golurk are just very cool Pokemon in general and their shinies are alright as well. Even though I probably should have gone for a Pokemon like Cryogonal or Beartick, I still went for Golet because of personal reasons. <laughs> And of course, the game blessed me with him. I could have also gotten a Mienfu or maybe even a Drudigan, but luckily I didn't get any of those. I got my boy, the Ghost Robot. After naming it Remnant, a reference to the game Remnant, which I used to play quite a bit. And the next thing on our list is taking down Getsus down at the desert. After doing this, we go back to the museum to get ourselves the White Stone. And we then try to move on to the final city, the final destination of this game, but first Bianca is holding us up. So we have to beat her and her big dog Stoutland in order to progress. And because this big dog has Intimidate, I started off with Galvantula, then swapped in Embor and killed it with two Arm Thrusts. But it was also able to set up two workups, which meant that if I wouldn't have killed, it would have gotten really scary. She then swapped in Simipore, so I swapped in my own monkey, Simi Sage, and killed it with a Seed Bomb. Sarah Perrier then came out, so I knew I had to swap in Garbodor here, because it's raining, which means that my Embor is not going to be able to do a lot. But my trash bag is, with two sludge bombs, he can already take down Sir Perrier, but he also got hit with two moves, which did quite a bit of damage, and we have weak armor, which means that our defense gets lowered if we get hit. The final Pokemon is once again Musharna. We have our counter for this. Scrafty can come in, crunch this thing a couple of times, and we win against Bianca. So we move on over to the final city, where we see that gets is once again up to no good. Another speech of two hours later, and we get to face the final gym leader, Drayden. 
Now for Drayden, I didn't really have a strategy, so I had to go in with Scrafty because Dredigan would be too slow for this gym battle. So we kill the first Pokemon Fracture with two crunches and we also get our Moxie boost. He then sends in his own Dredigan. Not shiny though, so we can also take this thing down with two crunches. We also got hit with a chip away, but that didn't do too much damage. And it had rough skin, which also did some chip damage which means that we only have about half of our health left for the final Pokemon Haxorus. Now we go into the final Pokemon Haxorus, which we can one-shot because we now have two Moxie boosts, and that gives us our final Gym Badge, which means that we can go ahead and travel to the Victory Road. But on our path to the Victory Road, we do have one last battle with our rival Sharon. He's here with Bianca and wants one final battle before we take on the Elite Four, he does start off with an Unpheasant, and I lead with my Galvantula and go for the Volt Switch. And then swap in Simisage, which was probably the dumbest thing I could do, but I did it anyway. We didn't get hit, luckily enough, and we then killed it with Acrobatics. I doubt it would have one shot at me anyway. He then went into his own Fiery Monkey, so I swapped in my Water Toad, and he was able to destroy the Fiery Monkey with Muddy Water and Bulldoze. For Samurad, I swapped in Simisage again and killed it with two Seed Bombs, and the final Pokemon, Lipard, got absolutely kicked by my Brick Break. That doesn't make sense, but it died anyway. That's the final Sharon battle out of the way, which means that we only have one more thing to do before we take on the Elite Four, and that is get our final Shiny Encounter. I decided to go into Victory Road. There were a couple of Pokemon I could get here, but the optimal one would be... Durant. It would be amazing if it's two of the Elite Four members, the Dark Type 1 and the Psychic Type 1, and it would only have one weakness, that being Fire. It doesn't have the coolest shiny, but it does look like it's going from a full metal ant into a kind of a rusted ant, which I like. And once again, I don't know how, but we managed to get another shiny that I actually wanted, Durant. I'm just glad I didn't get a Wubat because I really don't like Wubat. It's just a Zubat, but worse. After naming it Mo, we can now go ahead and challenge the Elite Four. But we also grinded up our team to the appropriate levels though, don't worry about that. I decided to go with the easiest one first, which was Caitlyn, which I should just be able to sweep with Scrafty. She has a Reuniclus as her first Pokemon and that thing doesn't die from a single crunch. So I just have to keep on using crunch until she ran out of full restores and then I eventually finished it off with Brick Break. Going into the next Pokemon, Sigilyph, who hit me with an Air Slash and I managed to survive and also not flinch because if I would have flinched I had the switch here. Luckily I didn't so I just took it out with another crunch. Since we now have two Moxie boosts we can take out Gothitelle and also Musharna with two more crunches, defeating Caitlyn very easily. The next Elite Four member on my list was Grimsley because I have a lot of Pokemon that are good against his. He leads with a Scrafty so I am going to be leading with Embor. Here I set up two workups and then kill the Scrafty with a single set of arm thrusts. Because we got hit with two Brick Breaks, he then sends out Crocodile. I know I have to switch here because Crocodile is probably going to outspeed me. And he also lowered my attack by another stage, so we're only at plus one right now. After going into Simisage and taking an Earthquake pretty well, we then take out Crocodile with Seed Bomb. For Bisharp, I swapped in Jeans and killed it with Brick Break, but we did get hit pretty hardly, leaving us with only 46 HP. And the final Pokemon, Lipard, got taken out by the single beam of my Araneo after I switched it in. This now brings us to the third Elite Four member, Chantal, which was, not going to lie, just a sweep with my Scrafty Scrunch, taking down Kofagrigus, Golurk, Chandelure, and also Jellicent, even without my Moxie ability because it got changed because of the mummy of Kofagrigus. This means that we only have one more Elite Four member to go, Marshall, the man that I'm most afraid of. He has fighting types, which is a type that I don't have a lot against, and our Scrafty is also weak to it, so we can't really use him. His leading Pokemon will be a throw, and I lead off with Pineapple, the first time I actually use him. Our Dragon Claw doesn't even do half of his health, and the throw even outspeeds us after only one Bulldoze. But I was able to make him waste two of his full restores though. Eventually I swapped in Mo and killed the throw with two more Iron Heads, because otherwise our Dragon was going down. This brought out Sock, which I also killed with two Iron Heads. Thank you, Flinches. 
He then brought out his mighty Conkeldur. I was able to hit one more Iron Head before getting hit with a Hammer Arm, and then I had to switch out. So I went into Galvantula, but I got hit with a Hammer Arm, and he got a critical hit, leaving me with only a little bit of HP remaining. So I went for the Electro Ball because I knew that I would kill here because Conkeldur is just way too slow. He then went into Mian Shao, his final Pokemon, so I Volt switched out into Bacon, who got hit with a Rock Slide, and then with a Jump Kick, leaving it with only 3 HP remaining, but we managed to kill with a Flamethrower. Just imagine, if he would have gotten a little bit of a higher roll, he would have killed me. Which would not have been the end of the world, since we also have a couple of Pokemon in the box remaining. Then we step on up to the Champion Room, where we normally have to face Adler, but here he gets stopped by N. The castle shoots out of the ground, also shoots stairs into the Pokemon League. We enter it, and now there is only one more thing to do. Capture Reshiram with an Ultra Ball because I wasted my Master Ball on Durant. Luckily though, I did some research and Reshiram and Zekrom are actually very easy to capture in Pokemon Black and White, so we easily captured it with a Great Ball. I of course don't add it to my team because it's not a shiny and it's also shiny locked in this game. Otherwise, I definitely would have gone for this as my final Pokemon. Then we stand eye to eye with N and his mighty Zekrom, but he doesn't have a shiny Zekrom, so this means that we're probably going to whoop his ass. So let's jump into the semi-final of this game. He starts off with his mighty Zekrom and I have Guz as my leading Pokemon with Bulldoze. He sets up a light screen and I hit a couple more Bulldozes, eventually he goes for the Giga Impact which means that he can't use a full restore and I can finish off Zekrom with a Bulldoze. I did almost die because I'm only at 27 HP left right now. Next Pokemon is Klinklang and for some reason I thought that this was going to be his Zoroark so I swapped in my Durant and went for x -Scissor. Since this was his real Klinklang this didn't do anything. So I then went into Jeans and took it down with two more Brick Breaks, he then went into his real Zoro arc. So I swapped in Galvantula, predicting the Focus Blast, he also missed so it doesn't really matter, and I went for the Signal Beam to take it down. Then he sends out his Caracosta, so I go for the Electro Ball while he goes for the Stone Edge, and then I managed to dodge the Stone Edge and take him down with a Sucker Punch. He then sends in his Archeops, which also goes for a Stone Edge, but after I get him into red health, so the Defiant ability kicks in, which means that his attack is now trash, and I can survive a Stone Edge and then take him down with Sucker Punch. He then has a Vanillux, so I go for the Volt Switch and go into Bacon, which gets hit with a Blizzard and does a lot of damage. But, you know, it's still not very effective, so I survive and then kill with Flamethrower. And this finally defeats N. But this is not the end though, we still have to fight Getzes as our final, final battle. And this, in my opinion, is by far the hardest battle in the game, so let's see how we fare. Since I can't swap the theme around for this battle, I'm going to have to go in with Seismitoad against his Kofagrigus, which is not really the optimal matchup. I do then set up a Rain Dance and manage to finish it off with two more Hydro Pumps, which means that we then go into Buffalon. So I swap in Durant, which is going to take a Head Charge pretty well. I then go for two Iron Heads on the Buffalon, and he wouldn't have taken me out here, but he gets a critical hit with a Wild Charge and takes out my Durant. Of course, we have to lose a team member in the final battle. I then swap in Jeans to go for the Retaliate and the Brick Break. I should not have gone for the Retaliate because it didn't do enough damage. So I got hit with another head charge and the recoil damage did take out the Buffalant. But now my Scrafty is not in an optimal position. Then swaps in High Dragon and I probably should have swapped into Galvantula here in order to take the Focus Blast. But I didn't think about it in the moment and went for Brick Break. So we got killed. I then did swap in Araneo and finally killed High Dragon with Single Beam. I am pretty good at though that we lost two of our team members here. So he then went into Bisharp and I Volt switched out into Embor who took a Stone Edge pretty well. Then went for the Flamethrower and took down Bisharp. For Seismitoad I swapped in Simisage and killed with Seed Bomb. Then Electros came out and I went for another Seed Bomb which was another mistake on my part but I couldn't really switch anyone in anyway and the uh, Electros went for Acrobatics and we lost a third team member to Getsis. One lucky crit, one misplay on my part and then I just couldn't switch into anyone else. So that's pretty unlucky. I then swapped in Bacon, our starter, went for the Arm Thrust and then a Flame Charge to finally finish off Getsis 
And if you think about it, we still have six shiny Pokemon left because we still have three in the box. But our death total jumped all the way from zero up to three. That was the end of this shiny journey. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of it. I absolutely enjoyed getting these shiny Pokemon even though it took me a quite a long time. But let me know in the comments down below what you want me to do next. And as always, I want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters. Their help is very much appreciated. And if you want to help me out yourself, the links are in the description. And as always, people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwiggo, and I'll see you guys next time.